بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ایوری باڈی اینڈ دس از لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی ایٹ اینڈ دس از دا ففتھ پروسیس آف رسک مینجمنٹ دیٹ از اباؤٹ پلاننگ رسک ریسپانسز سو بائی دس پوائنٹ ان ٹائم وی ہیو ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا امپورٹنس آف رسک مینجمنٹ ہاؤ ٹو آئیڈینٹیفائی دا رسک مینجمنٹ اینڈ آئیڈینٹیفائی دا رسکس ان رسک مینجمنٹ and how to uh, make analysis, uh, qualitative risk analysis and quantitative risk analysis. And uh, then we had talked a little bit more uh, about on uh, uh, risk responses, uh, but uh, we are going to talk in detail in this very session. So before we start lecture number 28, uh, uh, let's have the summary of the previous lecture. So in previous lecture, we were discussing about uh, subjective probabilities Remember, there are three types of uh, methods uh, to uh, you know, find out the probabilities in uh, analysis, risk analysis. And uh, one is uh, objectively determination, um, objective determination of the probabilities. And for that, you are in need of uh, historic data. Um, and then you are in need of, uh, uh, if the data is not available, then you can uh, use priori uh, probabilities and we have done few examples and few case studies on, on both of them uh, methods and then we had talked about subjective probabilities uh, how do we actually carry out uh, such a method uh, we use Delphi technique and um, experts they are sitting and then we are collecting the data and we are making statistical analysis and then we are sharing our statistical analysis results with these bunch of expert opinion, uh, uh, experts and then we uh, want them to revisit their opinions. So uh, then we had talked about the limitations of uh, uh, Delphi technique and subjective probabilities and one of the uh, mm, very, uh, 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 very good uh, uh, thing we have found out is uh, the disadvantage of uh, uh, mm, uh, uh, Delphi technique is it is a bit time consuming and then we had uh, talked about uh, the errors other so errors and biases uh, in subjective probabilities we have talked about the limitation of human mind and um, they follow uh, this uh, predictable behavior of uh, uh, following uh, rule of thumbs mm, they do not uh, actually try to validate their uh, assumptions and uh, they do not uh, actually are very uh, having this tendency to uh, revisit uh, and um, mm, uh, their uh, uh, calibrate their results okay and then there are three methods available for decomposition of the risks and uh, one of the method is called uh, fault uh, tree uh, analysis another is called even tree analysis and then mm, the third one is decision trees uh, so fault tree analysis uh, is used for the assessment of the probabilities and durations mm, but not for the impacts uh, and then um, even tree analysis is good for um, analyzing uh, the impacts and probabilities equally and then uh, we had done this uh, case study of decision trees uh, and then we had uh, talked about how to use expected monetary value concept um, and uh, how do we use uh, Monte Carlo simulation um, and then we had uh, talked a little bit on uh, sensitivity analysis and all these tools are used for the assessment of impact uh, as far as uh, decision trees and uh, uh, expected monetary value uh, things and sensitivity analysis are concerned. So then we had talked uh, uh, on risk duration. So we had done a few case studies on that. And uh, But uh, for our understanding or for this very particular course, or uh, we will be having uh, two um, characteristics focused on and uh, those are probability and impact and the effect of duration of risk will be considered in uh, impact this is this is what we have discussed the other day so um, this is about uh, 
quantitative risk analysis and uh, now we have uh, done what? We have done identify, identifying risks, uh, we have done qualitative risk analysis and we have done quantitative risk analysis of uh, highly ranked qualitative risks uh, and uh, through qualitative risk we've got few risks uh, which were selected for the responses and through quantitative there are risks which are selected for the responses and even in identification stage there were uh, one or two or three or four or few risks uh, were identified for the uh, some responses. Now what is uh, this thing? So plan risk response is the process of developing options and actions to enhance opportunities and to reduce threats to project objectives. It follows uh, the perform qualitative risk analysis process and the perform quantitative risk analysis process if used. So that is very important. So at times we are using, uh, so we are uh, using simply a, uh, identification and then we have a list of probable responses. And then qualitative analysis So then we had like uh, the identification at start there were 10 risks and from these 10 one was selected for a response directly and 9 were went to qualitative and out of these 9 one simply went to watch list one and uh, two gone to quantitative and then uh, there are left with six, so six then went to quality uh, uh, responses, and out of these two risk, as far as quantification is concerned, will after uh, quantification will go to the responses. Okay, so um, uh, so th this is how we are actually having this complete, and this process is cyclic and uh, iterative based. You know, so you will keep doing that stuff mm, more uh, more and often. Okay. So, uh, plan risk response process includes the identification and assignment of one person and that is called uh, the risk response owner or risk owner to take responsibility for each uh, agreed to and founded risk responses. So one person is actually assi uh, assigned uh, for this uh, very particular risk. And then a plan risk responses addresses the risk by their priority, inserting resources and activities into the budget, schedule, and project management plan. So, pehla jo step humne kya karna hai? Ki ye ek risk hai. Isko kon se sahab dekhenge ya kon se sahaba dekhengi? So, you you are in need of risk owner. Ab wo kya karenge? वो जो साहब हैं जिनका वो रिस्क है या जिसके वो ओनर बनाए गए हैं अब वो उसके ऊपर नजर रखेंगे और नजर रखने से क्या मुराद है कि उस वो जो इवेंट्स हैं या जो वो इवेंट है उसकी क्या कॉजेस हो सकती हैं उसको कर्ब करेंगे या उसको एनहेंस करेंगे अगर वो ऑपरेटिविटी रिस्क है तो उसको बढ़ाने की कोशिश करेंगे और अगर वो नेगेटिव रिस्क है तो उसकी कॉजेस को कम करने की कोशिश करेंगे और कोशिश करेंगे कि उसकी जो प्रोबेबिलिटी है अगर नेगेटिव रिस्क है तो वो कम हो जाए और अगर वो कम हो रहा है तो साथ में कोशिश करेंगे कि कुछ ऐसे काम किए जाएं कि अगर वो रिस्क हो जाए तो उसका इंपैक्ट कम हो जाए तो और इस वक्त उसका स्टेटस क्या है कब वो रिस्क होने का चांस है क्यों वो डिले हो रहा है कब रिस्क एलिमिनेट होगा तो ये सारी की सारी बातें एक इंडिविजुअल को असाइन कर दी जाती हैं और वो इंडिविजुअल कहलाता है रिस्क ओनर आपके सारे रिस्क जो हैं उनके ओनर्स होने चाहिए और ये जरूरी नहीं है कि एक फर्द को सिर्फ एक ही रिस्क मिले एक साथ या साहिबा के पास छह सात आठ रिस्क भी हो सकते हैं लेकिन ये जरूरी है कि हर रिस्क को एक रिस्क ओनर जरूर मिले दूसरा उसके बाद जो हमने काम करना है उसके बाद ये है कि हमने उनकी जो प्रायोरिटीज हैं रिस्क की वो देखनी है कि क्या प्रायोरिटीज सेट हुई हैं और प्रायोरिटीज कहाँ सेट होती है रिस्क की वो सेट होती हैं क्वालिटेटिव रिस्क एनालिसिस के अंदर और क्वांटिटेटिव रिस्क एनालिसिस के अंदर और ये जो प्रायोरिटी लिस्ट आ गई है आपके पास अब फाइनल 
तो क्या कोई प्रायोरिटी लिस्ट फाइनल होती है प्रोजेक्ट के अंदर द आंसर इज नो एक वन पॉइंट इन टाइम के अंदर तो हो सकती है लेकिन थ्रू आउट द प्रोजेक्ट वो सेम नहीं रहती वजह यह है कि कुछ नए रिस्क आ जाते हैं जो एग्जिस्टिंग रिस्क हैं उनकी प्रॉबिलिटी चेंज हो जाती है उनका इम्पैक्ट चेंज हो जाता है उनका इम्पैक्ट चेंज होने की वजह से उनका जो रिस्क है वो टोटल चेंज हो जाता है तो करेक्टरिस्टिक्स के ऊपर आप नजर रख रहे हैं और करेक्टरिस्टिक्स को आप क्वालिटेटिव रिस्क एनालिसिस जो कि ट्रेटिव प्रोसेस है आप उसको कंटिन्यूसली देख रहे हैं तो उसके अंदर उसकी वजह से आपका जो रिस्क है वो ऊपर नीचे हो रहा होता है ठीक है इसी तरह क्वान्टिटेटिव आप टेक्निक यूज कर रहे हैं आपके पास शुरू में डाटा थोड़ा था आपके पास इन्फॉर्मेशन कम थी अब आपके पास इन्फॉर्मेशन ज्यादा आ गई है डाटा आ गया अब आप एक अच्छा क्वांटिटेटिव एनालिसिस कर सकते हैं तो अब आपका क्या फर्क पड़ेगा अब जो आपने मतलब उस इन्फॉर्मेशन के बढ़ने से या कम होने से आपकी प्रायोरिटी लिस्ट चेंज हो जाएगी सो so, ये सारी चीजें और इस तरह की बहुत सारी चीजें मिल करके आपकी प्रायोरिटी लिस्ट को चेंज करती रहेंगी थ्रू आउट द लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ योर प्रोजेक्ट सो दैट वॉन्ट बी अ वेरी सिंपल वन फाइनल प्रायोरिटी लिस्ट ऑफ रिस्क बट एक वन पॉइंट इन टाइम में ये इस तरह होगा उस प्रायोरिटी लिस्ट के हिसाब से आप रिस्पॉन्सिस जो है वो डिसाइड करेंगे एंड देन इंसर्टिंग रिसोर्सिस और फिर आप ये देखेंगे कि अगर आपने ये रिस्पॉन्स करना है तो आपको इसके लिए क्या रिसोर्सिस चाहिए हैं मसलन एक रिस्क है उसके लिए आपने रिस्क ओनर तो बना दिया और आपने एक लेडी को उसका रिस्क कॉर्नर बना दिया तो इसका मतलब ये हरगिज नहीं है कि वो लेडी जो है वो सारा का सारा रिस्क को अवॉइड करेंगी या रिस्क को टेक करेंगी या रिस्क को न्यूट्रलाइज करेंगी बट शी इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल और फिर आप उनको ड्यू रिसोर्सेस भी देंगे जो पैसे चाहिए हैं जो टाइम चाहिए है जो ह्यूमन रिसोर्स चाहिए है जो मशीन चाहिए हैं वो सारी की सारी आप उनको देंगे सो so दैट वो फिर उस आ, को प्रॉपरली हैंडल कर सकें और आ, फिर आप इस तरह करेंगे कि ऐसी ये सारी जो चीजें आप अब नई आइडेंटिफाई हुई हैं जो भी ऑब्वियसली आपको रिसोर्सेस चाहिए तो इनकी एक कॉस्ट होगी वो कैलकुलेट होगी और उसका एक टाइम होगा उन सारी एक्टिविटीज का वो जो टाइम है और वो जो कॉस्ट है वो शेड्यूल के अंदर अब एंटर होगा तो ये सारी चीजें बेसिकली आप इस लेवल पे करेंगे ओके सो द पिक्चर ओवर देर इज सेंग द सेफ्टी इज अ वर्च्यू एंड एंड वैल्यू सो uh how this uh, picture is actually integrated with the text let's read and let's talk on that so the plan risk response process determines effective response actions now that is very important we do not want those actions which are not effective okay uh, that are appropriate to the priority of the individual risk and to overall project risk aur dusri jo isme word aaya wo hai appropriate iski misal aise hai कि आपका एक रिस्क आने वाला है और अगर वो हो जाता है तो आपके प्रोजेक्ट को सौ रुपए का नुकसान होगा लेकिन अगर आप इसको मिटिगेट करने लगते हैं तो आपको एक ह्यूमन रिसोर्स लगाना पड़ेगा जो एक घंटा इसके ऊपर काम करेगा तो ये रिस्क खत्म हो सकता है और उसकी उसकी जो पर डे सैलरी है वो है थाउजेंड रुपीज अब आपने उसको एंगेज किया एट आवर्स के लिए अगर उसकी बनती है तकरीबन Uh, और वन ट्वेंटी फाइव रुपीज सो अब एक सौ पच्चीस रुपए उसकी कॉस्ट है जो आप रिसोर्स मोबिलाइज करें और सौ रुपए उसकी कॉस्ट है तो अब आप नहीं ये काम करेंगे आप उस रिस्क को छोड़ देंगे ऐसे ही वो हो जाए उसमें ज्यादा नुकसान नहीं है लेकिन अगर आप रिसोर्स लगाएंगे उसमें ज्यादा नुकसान होगा तो आपकी एफर्ट अप्रोप्रिएट होनी चाहिए है. एंड इट टेक्स इन टू अकाउंट द स्टेक होल्डर्स रिस्क एटीट्यूड and the convention specified in the risk management plan in addition to any constraints and assumptions that were determined when the risks were identified and analyzed so ye sari cheeze aapne ye dekhni hai jab aap response plan kar rahe hain to ye ye na ho ke aapka aap ek risk ke liye planning kar lete hain ji hame is kaam ki insurance karwa deni chahiye ab wo ek sare stakeholders us pe mutfiq hain ki ye low risk hai aur aapne uske liye insurance जो है वो रिकमेंड कर दी उसके जो प्रीमियम्स हैं लाइक वो एक लाख रुपए के हैं अब 
आपका जो लो रिस्क है वो जो स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं आपके वो इस चीज पे एग्रीड हैं कि दो लाख रुपए तक के जो रिस्क होंगे वो लो रिस्क होंगे और ये इतने कंसिडरेबल नहीं अब आपने दो लाख रुपए की इंश्योरेंस डिक्लेयर कर दी या आपने रिकमेंड कर दी या दो लाख दस हजार की रिकमेंड कर दी तो आपके स्टेक होल्डर्स इसको सेकेंड नहीं करेंगे इसको वैलिडेट नहीं करेंगे इस स्ट्रेटजी को वो वैलिडेट नहीं करेंगे वो इसको रिफ्यूज कर देंगे सो so, आपको स्टेक होल्डर्स के जो रिस्क एटीट्यूड हैं वो उसकी भी एक डॉक्यूमेंटेशन होनी चाहिए आपके पास और उसके बाद आपको ये देखना चाहिए कि क्या कॉन्स्टेंट्स हैं और क्या जम्पन हैं आपकी जो कि आपकी रिस्क जो है आप आइडेंटिफाई करने जा रहे थे तो ये सारी चीजें मिल करके आपके प्लान रिस्क मैनेजमेंट को जो है वो अफेक्टिव और यूजफुल बनाती हैं। उसके बाद रिस्क रिस्पॉन्स एंड रिस्क जनरेशन ये बहुत अच्छी बात है ये अगर आप इसको एप्रीहेंड कर लें रिस्पॉन्सिस एट टाइम्स व्हेन इंप्लीमेंटेड कैन हैव पोटेंशियल अफेक्ट्स ऑन द प्रोजेक्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव्स एंड एज सच कैन जनरेट एडिशनल रिस्क राइट सो यू आर आपने आइडेंटिफाई किया कि हमारा प्रोजेक्ट है उसका जो ये वर्क पैकेज है ये हम आउटसोर्स कर देंगे क्योंकि इसके पास हमारे पास रिसोर्सेज नहीं है और अगर हम रिसोर्सेज मार्केट से लेने जाते हैं तो हमें टाइम लगेगा और वो टाइम इतना ज्यादा लग जाएगा कि हमारे प्रोजेक्ट ड्यूरेशन से बढ़ के है तो अभी हम फौरी तौर पर यह कर सकते हैं कि हमारे पास एक सप्लायर है जिसको हम ये काम दे देते तो आपने ये काम इसको दे दिया लेकिन जब आपने इसको दिया तो फिर आपके नए रिस्क बढ़ जाएंगे पहले आप टाइम के रिस्क को बचा रहे थे अब आपके सप्लायर के रिस्क आ सकते हैं ह्यूमन रिसोर्स के रिस्क आ सकते हैं कम्युनिकेशन के रिस्क आ सकते हैं तो ये सारी चीजें सारी चीजें आपको देखनी है सो वाइल यू आर डूइंग दिस वेरी गुड कप ऑफ टी एंड यू आर रिलैक्सड आफ्टर साइनिंग द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बट अगेन देर मे बी अनदर रिस्क ओके ओवर देयर सो ये जो चीज है इसको आपको बड़े अच्छे तरीके से ये बड़ी अच्छी बात है कि अगर आप इस पॉइंट को बड़े अच्छे तरीके से समझ सो दीज आर नोन एज सेकेंडरी रिस्क and have to be analyzed equally uh, and planned for in the same way as those risks which were initially identified ab aap kya karenge ki ye ek risk tha let's say risk number 1 aur isko aapne avoid karne ke liye supply risk ke teen risk aa gaye risk a b and c ab aap dekhenge isko quantify karenge aap isko aapne quantify kiya hua hai और इनको भी क्वांटिफाई करेंगे सिमिलर सिमिलर नेचर और फिर ये देखेंगे कि किसकी क्वांटिफिकेशन ज्यादा है अगर तो इस रिस्क की फिर भी ज्यादा है देन यू विल गो फॉर बट देन यू विल की मैनेजिंग दोज और अगर आपकी इन इसकी क्वांटिफिकेशन ज्यादा है तो फिर आप ये वाली जो है नहीं कर सकते ये जो रिस्पॉन्स आप नहीं उठा सकते और ये आपको हमेशा याद रखना चाहिए कि बेसिकली वट यू डू टू ब्रिंग योर प्रोजेक्ट बैक ऑन ट्रैक देन यू आर डूइंग टू ब्रिंग सम चेंज जो पैटर्न एक चल रहा है प्रोजेक्ट का और चाहे वो गलत है लेकिन जब आप उसको लेके वापस आने लगते हैं तो कुछ ना कुछ चेंजेस जरूर आती हैं और वो जहां भी चेंजेस आएंगी वो हाँ रिस्क लाजमी छुपा हुआ होगा तो आपने वो सारी चीजें ढूंढनी है ऐसी जगह जहां से रिस्क छुपा हुआ हो सकता है ओके okay, उसके बाद जी है रेजिडल रिस्क सो इट इज नेवर फिजिबल और इवन डिजायरेबल टू एलिमिनेट ऑल थ्रेट फ्रॉम अ प्रोजेक्ट Similarly, there is also a limit to extent to which opportunities can be proactively managed. So um, there may be residual risk; they they will remain um, uh, there after the responses have been implemented. So these residual residual risks should be clearly identified, analyzed, documented, communicated to all relevant stakeholders. ठीक है जी हम ये सारे रिस्क तो खत्म कर रहे हैं लेकिन इसके साथ हम रह गए हैं and that will remain there ab hum iska kuch nahi kar sakte ya hame kuch karna nahi chahiye then the project will move on the main problem or main objective over there is to enhance the certainty not to go and kill every risk out there okay just like other um, uh, methods like uh, processes uh, identify risk or plan uh, or perform qualitative risk analysis or perform quantitative risk analysis there are some critical success factors for uh, plan risk response as well so as far as um, uh, plan risk uh, response are concerned uh, uh, so there are three elements to that and that is about people that is about planning and that that is about an analyzing
So as far as people are concerned, uh, we are having this communication issue and we are having uh, this issue of defining uh, roles and responsibilities, the clear roles and responsibilities, uh, that is an issue. And as far as planning is concerned, so uh, we should specify the timing of uh, responses and then uh, we, we will have to provide resources, budget and schedule. And uh, as far as analysis is concerned, we want to address uh, interaction of risk and responses, uh, how the risks are responding to the responses, uh, and how effectively the risk responses are being implemented, how our responses were efficient or not, uh, and then ensuring appropriate, timely, effective, and agreed upon responses. And uh, address threats and opportunities collectively. This is not that you just think about threats or opportunities. And after that, develop strategies. So these are few success factors. Let's discuss them one by one. Okay, communication. Uh, so communication uh, with the various stakeholders should be maintained in an open and appropriate, honest manner. The resulting plans are disseminated and approval obtained in order to ensure full acceptance by all the stakeholders. Okay, so uh, this is our uh, response. And this will eliminate this risk, A, and this is response uh, B and eliminating risk A and a part of is there. That is a resi residual risk. So you need to tell uh, this thing to the stakeholders. And there is another thing, okay, so this was the risk and you have planned something for it and now how effectively or efficiently you are working, you, you will have to inform the stakeholders. So communication is very important. Uh, most of the time the at project communication is uh, uh, happening all around there. So my question has been uh, through status meetings, what is the most important thing we are discussing? So that is issues and risk. So first thing is um, uh, communication, we have talked on that and then clearly defined risk roles and responsibility. So who is going to own the risk, who is going to respond to the risk. So the risk response success will be dependent upon the full support and involvement of the project team and other stakeholders. Uh, the key roles for project risk management for are those of risk owner and risk action owner. So um, there is a difference between risk owner and risk action owner. Uh, so um, one will keep an eye and uh, that may be a CAM or uh, a pro a work uh, package manager. And then one should be assigned uh, to, to necessary arrangements of all the uh, responses. So a single risk owner should be assigned to every identified risk. And each agreed upon risk responses should have a single risk action owner, right? Uh, so uh, we have already talked that every risk should be uh, given to somebody for uh, keeping an eye and for action. Uh, and uh, uh, for, um, uh, but this is not uh, really uh, mean uh, if only one guy will uh, do one risk, okay? So one uh, guy may have Mm, been a uh, risk owner of 10, pro, uh, 10 risks and uh, risk action owner of uh, two risks, okay? And uh, the third uh, thing is then specify timing of risk responses. So agreed upon responses should be integrated into the project management plan, schedule uh, management plan, cost management plan, and will therefore be scheduled and assigned for the execution. So the responses that depend on uncertain conditions uh, should also be monitored so as to be performed if the conditions warrant them. So timing is very important. Uh, remember there is a difference between the timing of risk responses and the frequency of performing plan risk response process. Okay. So as I've told you there is 
uh, frequency of uh, every different process like uh, if I'm actually doing that so I will be having weekly risk uh, identification uh, meetings uh, so frequency for identify risk is v by v uh, uh, is weekly and uh, then there is this is kind of uh, iterative uh, one and then um, the second thing is uh, emergent uh, identification and then I will have uh, some system intact okay so if this is the condition these are the conditions and you've come across one risk which actually fulfill uh, this uh, these conditions then you can come and uh, have discussed the, that risk but then um, after identification then um, I may have uh, 15 uh, uh, days um, uh, after 15 days I may have risk analysis for qualitative uh, thing and after uh, like uh, one month I may uh, carry out those simulations and quantitative risk analysis so the frequency is total different thing and then uh, risk responses may be carried out uh, after uh, every week or after every 15 days with the qualitative risk analysis right so that is another thing and the timing of risk responses is something else and that is if that is one risk and that is some response so that response will start on like uh, January 12 and will there up to January 22 and there would be resources there would be the cost and there would be time duration available for that so you should be very much ready for the January 12 where if you are a risk owner and then you will uh, keep an eye and then you will perform necessary uh, uh, working over there okay so this is about a specific uh, timing of risk response and yes uh, okay you have uh, risks and you have analyzed it and uh, you have planned a, a response and now uh, you had uh, uh, one risk owner but you haven't given him or her with the money or the resources uh, do not do that so if you want to be very proactive then you should provide all the uh, toolbox uh, to your um, uh, team and uh, uh, especially risk owner so each response should be planned in detail in accordance with the method methodology of the project and integrated into project management plan uh, integration mean uh, you should have the um, budget of that in budget cost part of project man management plan and you should have uh, uh, included this uh, um, uh, the time uh, activities time of the activities in your schedule and hence your total schedule uh, will be now uh, having those activities related to uh, respond, response things uh, and then you should have assigned resources okay if I'm actually giving this thing to uh, Miss X uh, so Miss X will have uh, X Y Z uh, uh, and ABC resources available with her as well so this entails estimating the resources similar to uh, the exercise we have done earlier uh, when we were estimating the resources in uh, time management part of the project management costs cost management part of uh, uh, project management and duration uh, duration uh, activity duration estimate of uh, uh, time management part of project management updating the budget and schedule obtaining approval from the management and obtaining commitment from the risk owners and risk action owners so these are uh, the steps you follow but before you can reach there before you can obtain the commitment you should have committed some resources after the approval of the management so that uh, then you can ask uh, what is the effectiveness of uh, their responses okay uh, then address the interaction of risks and responses uh, we have told uh, that uh, and talked that uh, a risk response may trigger another few risks and those are called secondary risks so keeping this thing in mind just listen what the, what is written on the slide so responses may be developed uh, to address risk related either by cause or effect or by common root cause Categorization of risks, for example, by using tools 
such as the risk breakdown structure, affinity diagrams, or other categorizing tools may help identify and address this situation. So there is also a need during the plan risk uh, responses process to consider the risk aggregated uh, during the perform qualitative risk analysis and then to develop generic responses where possible. So that is very important. So you have done this uh, thing. You have done uh, quantitative risk analysis and now you do know that how much money you are in need or how much time you are in need of. Now you can actually bundle few risks. One, two, three, four, five. And you can have a collective, okay? So if you are having this work package, uh, this project, and this, these are control accounts, So, and then these are work packages you are having. Okay, so if you have identified that uh, this is high risk, this is high risk, and this is high risk qualitative, and then you have carried out the quantitative. So, um, one lakh is the risk cost, and then two lakhs, and 10,000. So, you can have about 3 lakh 50,000 is the uh, risk cost and uh, the profit over there is like um, uh, 20,000. So what you can do over there is you can outsource this whole package to somebody else. So this is, this is a very good uh, type of thing. After quantification or qualitative analysis, you can have uh, this very group and now you can outsource that and hence this is a very good plan. So another interaction effect that may occur is when one risk, if it occurs, may affect the probability or impact of other uh, risks. So you have to keep, uh, so this ball one will uh, strike to that and whole of the Lord will go over there. So if one uh, risk occurs, you should have very good idea how can this risk uh, may lead to another uh, triggering of another risks. And uh, then uh, you should uh, uh, be ensuring the appropriate, timely, effective, and agreed upon responses. Uh, so responses should be appropriate. Appropriate mean uh, in accordance with to, to the level of effort and uh, the other things. Uh, this is not that you have effort on risk. You have to have proportionate uh, effort. उसके बाद timely होना चाहिए, जब ज़रूरत हो उस वक़्त होना चाहिए, cost effectiveness ये हम बार-बार बात कर रहे हैं, इसकी feasible, achievable, agreed upon, agreed upon बहुत important है, अगर आपके stakeholders आपसे मुत्फिक ही नहीं हैं उस चीज़ के ऊपर, तो फिर आप वो काम कैसे कर सकते हैं? तो इस चीज़ का एक ख्याल रखिएगा, उसके बाद assigned and accepted uh, any proposed risk response plan needs to be assessed against the following criteria. So वो क्या criteria हैं? देखना यह है कि consistency with organizational values and project objectives and stakeholder expectations. So, जो भी आपके responses हों, क्या वो आपके organizational जो values हैं उनके साथ aligned हैं, क्या आपके project objectives जो हैं, क्या उनसे आप हट तो नहीं रहे, और क्या stakeholder की जो expectations हैं, क्या आपने वो तो undermine नहीं कर दी, उसके बाद आपने यह देखना है कि क्या वो technically possible भी हैं या नहीं, उनके technical feasibility भी देख लें, जो आप रिस्पॉन्सेस प्लान करने जा रहे हैं, उसके बाद एबिलिटी ऑफ़ द प्रोजेक्ट टीम और रिस्क एक्शन ओनर्स आउटसाइड द प्रोजेक्ट टू कैरी आउट द कॉर्रेस्पोंडिंग एक्शन, फिर ये ये नहीं है कि आपने ये वर्क पैकेज जो बनाया है एक प्रोजेक्ट का और ये आपने आउटसोर्स कर दिया था सारा का सारा एक एक्स साब को, तो क्या � इस तरह नहीं होता कि आपने 20,000 पीस प्रॉफिट रखा और बाकी सारा दे दिया आप वो करें या ना करें। It is not like that because one of the customer or sitting outside he is or she is least bothered about कि आप इसको कैसे मैनेज करते हैं। आप खुद से करते हैं, किसी से करवाते हैं, ये उनका काम नहीं है। अब आपने अपना प्रॉफिट रखे इसको जब दे दिया तो आपने ये भी देखना है कि X की balance between overall impact of the response 
on the project objectives and the improvement in the risk profile of the project. So, ये भी आपने इसको balance करना है कि overall impact जो है उसका वो क्या आ रहा है response का and the improvement in the risk profile of the project. आप बहुत ज़्यादा effort कर रहे हैं क्या risk profile कुछ कम हो रहा है या नहीं हो रहा जितना पहले था क्या उसी तरह है consistently चल रहा है तो इसका मतलब है आपके responses जो हैं वो ठीक नहीं हैं या कुछ उनको improvement की ज़रूरत है. And then you want to address both. If you are uh, so afraid of this, you, you should also be finding this one as well. So risk response planning uh, should combine responses that address the threats as well as those that provide for opportunities into single integrated plan. If either threat or opportunities are not fully addressed, uh, the combined set of response strategies will be incomplete and may even be invalid. So this is very important. Uh, this is not only about if uh, uh, you are uh, doing very good and you are responding uh, to the threats very good, uh, then you are okay. No, it is not. And then you will have to identify the opportunity. At times, you are working good and you have curbed this part of uh, a bad face, you know. Okay, so and uh, you have saved 20,000 rupees by proper good risk management by eliminating all threats. But what if I, I told you that the opportunities were worth in 2 million? And if a part of it even, like if 10%, 20,000 is just a tiny amount as far as uh, uh, this uh, opportunity is concerned, 10% or something like that. So or uh, now what you have to do is you have to also capitalize on opportunities as well and you want to exploit those so if your responses are actually uh, taking both the threats and responsibility uh, and uh, uh, opportunities then you are doing good and then develop strategies before uh, tactical responses so that is very important before you actually start doing something first think then plan and then you manage. So this is a strategy. This should be the strategy for uh, this very particular task. So risk response planning should be carried out in an open-minded manner rather than adopting the first response that seems to be feasible. So pehla response hai aap usko na karein. Be creative. List down a few options. One, two, three, four, five. Have some uh, advantages, disadvantages. SWOT analysis and then choose some something based on some write down some assumptions and some uh, uh, constraints and if these assumptions and constraints are not to be invalid then this uh, this is not a right choice so ch select another response then okay so this is how things uh, actually uh, are uh, being worked out as far as um, uh, responses are concerned so the responses should be planned at a general and a strategic level and the strategy validated and agreed upon prior to developing the detailed tactical approach. Okay, so this was the preparatory work for uh, understanding the um, plan risk responses. Now let's have a look uh, uh, what is uh, over there. Uh, as for uh, inputs, tool techniques, and uh, outputs, uh, so many people call it ITTO. So ITTO mean inputs, tool technique, and outputs. As for PMI lingo is concerned, okay. So uh, first input is uh, risk register. The second one is risk management plan, and. Uh, uh, you, uh, what tools and techniques you are you are going to use is tools and techniques, strategies for negative risk or threats, strategies for positive risk or opportunities, and contingent response strategies and expert judgment. And what you get out of it is risk register updates, risk related contract decisions, and project management plan updates and project document updates. So, uh, like uh, through that, you may update uh, like uh, budget or something like that. project management plan updates mean uh, process improvement, let's say, process Im improvement plan, 
has been updated or communication plan has been updated or uh, scope management plan has been updated. So uh, these are few um, tools and techniques, outputs and inputs um, as far as uh, plan risk response process is concerned. So let's have uh, what is uh, given over there uh, for tools and techniques. Okay, so let's start with uh, negative risk and uh, you know this guy is actually saying no. So you want to avoid that, okay? So risk avoidance uh, um, involves changing the project management plan to eliminate the threat entirely, okay? So what you want, changing the project management plan. So whatever you have actually planned, or you want to change it. So just eliminate that. The project manager may also isolate the project objectives uh, from the risks impact uh, or change the objective that is in jeopardy. Um, example of this include extending the schedule, changing the strategy, uh, construction strategy, working methodology, stuff like that, and uh, or reducing the scope. So we are having this uh, risk on this uh, work package. We, we actually try to eliminate this one. We are not doing, going to do that. The most radical avoidance strategy is to shut down the project entirely. Now that is, so there, there may come a point uh, where you want to do that, okay? So some risks that arise early in the project can be avoided by clarifying requirements, obtaining information, improving communication, or requiring expertise. So this is about a first strategy of negative risk uh, or threats, you, you just avoid that. And uh, the second one is transferring. Um, the second strategy for negative risk or threats is transfer. Uh, so tr risk transfer requires uh, shifting some or all of the negative impact of a threat along with ownership of the response to a third party. So transferring the risk simply gives another party responsibility for its management. So it does not eliminate it, remember? Um, it is just transferring. So transferring liability for risk is most effective in dealing with financial risk exposure. So kind of, uh, you, you people uh, must have uh, known uh, of insurance concept. So risk transfers, transference nearly uh, always involve payment of a risk premium to the party taking on the risk. So iske saath ye nahi hai ki aapne unko muft mein kaam kar lena. Then you have to give uh, this premium. Or agar aap ye contract out karte hain ya source out karte hain, in that case aapko usko profit dena padega ya uski fees deni padegi. Okay, and then uh, there is another uh, tool and that is uh, transfer uh, and uh, still same. Uh, transference uh, tools can be quite diverse and include but are not limited to the use of insurance, performance bonds, warranties, uh, guarantees, uh, contracts uh, uh, may be used to transfer liability of specified risk to another party. So, jo log, uh, contracts mein kaam karte hain, unke liye ये बात बड़ी मामूल की होगी कि उनके कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स के अंदर लिखा होता है कि ये रिस्क किसका है सो उनके कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स के अंदर क्लॉजेस होती है इस तरह की रिस्क ऑफ क्लाइंट और एम्प्लॉयर रिस्क ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्टर और परचेजर और सेलर राइट सो ये रिस्क उधर ऑलरेडी डिफाइंड होते हैं तो ये भी एक बड़ा अच्छा तरीका है कि आप रिस्क को ट्रांसफर कर दें थ्रू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट in many cases, use of a cost plus contract may transfer the cost risk to the buyer, while a fixed price contract may transfer risk to the seller. So these are few contract types. We are going to learn uh, the contract types and stuff like that in relevant parts of uh, procurement management of this course. And uh, yes, uh, over there, you know, and so you are having a lock over there and uh, then there is again a breakage so you are having something over there so you are actually mitigating it you are not eliminating it so risk mitigation implies a reduction in the probability and or impact of an adverse risk 
event to be within acceptable threshold limits. Uh, taking early action to reduce the probability and or impact of a risk occurring on the project is often more effective than trying to repair the damage after the risk has occurred. So, your approach is preventive because the cost of prevention ki jo cost hoti hai, wo rework ki cost se hamesha kam hoti hai, most of the cases. So, adopting less complex processes, conducting more tests, are choosing a more stable supplier are examples of uh, mitigation um, ac actions. And uh, where uh, it is not possible to reduce probability, a mitigation response might address the risk impact by targeting linkages that determine the severity. For example, designing uh, redundancy into system may reduce the impact from a failure of the original component. This is a pretty example. Hai. कि जब आप कंक्रीट छत पे डाल रहे हो और आपका जो कंक्रीट मिक्सिंग मशीन है वो खराब हो गई तो अब आप कंक्रीट रोक नहीं सकते तो आप क्या करते हैं जो कंक्रीट के बैचेस निकल चुके हैं आप उनके अंदर कोई रिटार्डर डाल देते हैं ताकि वो जो सेटिंग टाइम है उनका बढ़ जाए और इन मेन टाइम में आपकी वो मशीन ठीक हो जाए और ओवर देयर यू कैन सी अ वेरी गुड पिक्चर समबडी इज एक्चुअली थ्रोइंग अ ट्यूब टू समबडी हु इज इन uh, water for uh, for the safety okay and uh, where uh, well uh, you, the last one uh, the last uh, of uh, strategies of negative risk is um, you simply accept it so this strategy is adopted because it is seldom possible to eliminate all the re threats from the project so this strategy indicates that the project team has decided not to change the project management plan to deal with the risk for that particular risk, okay? Uh, or is unable to identify any other suitable response strategy. So this strategy can be either passive or active. Uh, what do you mean by passive? Passive, let it happen. Let it happen, then we will see. Or active, okay. Uh, we will, uh, if that is that will happen, I will uh, have a plan, okay, uh, I will uh, be moving these machines from that place to this so that uh, we can actually handle this situation. So that is kind of uh, passive and active acceptance. And uh, uh, yes, we have uh, talked about a few risks which were uh, placed in watch list. And one of the watch list risks has actually occurred. So there is no analysis, uh, there is no uh, response available. Uh, though what should we do? We have to actually uh, either accept it or we should have to devise our uh, uh, plan immediately to carry out necessary, uh, uh, you know, recovery. Uh, then um, passive acceptance requires no action uh, except to document the strategy, leaving the project team to deal with the risk as they occur. Uh, the most common active acceptance strategy is to establish a contingency reserve, including amounts of time, money, and resources to handle the risk if those happen. And uh, then uh, strategies for positive risk or opportunities. Uh, so uh, you just want to exploit those. First uh, strategy is to exploit. So this strategy may be selected for risks with positive impacts where the organization wishes to ensure that the opportunity is realized. This strategy, strategy uh, seeks to eliminate the uncertainty associated with a particular upside risk uh, by ensuring the opportunity definitely happens. An example of directly exploiting responses include assigning an organization's most talented resources to the project to reduce the time to completion or to provide lower cost than originally planned. And uh, then second strategy for positive risks or opportunities is to share. So sharing a positive risk involves allocating some or all of the ownership of the opportunity to a third party uh, who is best able to capture the opportunity for the benefit of the project. Examples of sharing actions include forming risk-sharing partnerships, teams, um, special purpose companies, or joint ventures 
which can be established with the express purpose of taking advantage of the opportunity so that all parties gain from their actions. So let's say there is a contract and that contract is 1 billion contract. Okay. So uh, your organization has been able uh, to complete uh, mm, so many projects and one of the uh, project is with these Egyptian client and you are working with uh, 500 uh, million contract and this is the maximum uh, limit and there comes you are working on a project and there comes an opportunity they want to extend this project and uh, the cost is the new cost or additional cost is this one and uh, you are having negotiation with uh, the client and uh, you have said and you have offered uh, your services for the scope increase but the client is of the opinion that you are not having that capacity available you are having only capacity of this much amount uh, with you so what should you do just let it go or you actually have this one good company, competitor one, was competitor initially. But now they are having equal uh, uh, capacity. And if we, you both are uh, got together uh, or get together, then you may have the required uh, requirements. So after having contact with them, you say, okay, I am working on this 500 million and I am actually having 10% profit. So I am expecting over the 20% profit. So I will take, uh, as I have uh, explored the opportunity, so I will have 15% profit and you will have 5% profit. They will say no, we will have 12% profit as you are also having 10% profit from there. And then you reach to the point, okay, both, have will, both will have 10% profit each. In, in that case, everybody, and then you can have joint venture and uh, common team from both the organizations. So this is kind of opportunity. If you were, uh, you were alone, then you could not have materialized that opportunity, right? But uh, if you have shared it with somebody else, so you, now you are able to uh, have qualified for the um, thing. So uh, uh, this is a very good example of uh, sharing uh, the risk. <coughs> Enhancement, uh, the third uh, strategy is for positive risk is to enhance. Uh, so this strategy is used uh, to increase the probability and or positive impacts of an opportunity identifying and maximum key drivers of these positive impact risk may increase the probability of their occurrence. Example of enhancing opportunities include adding more resources to an activity to finish early. So um, then um, uh, one of uh, your project is underway and this is kind of a schedule for your project. And uh, now you have completed this, this and this and uh, half of uh, this has been completed and uh, a part of it has been completed. So mm, you are into month number four, let's say, and there is uh, one contract clause uh, that uh, if you finish your project uh, one month before, uh, then you will get a bonus and bonus is up to 10% of the total cost. That means if you are working on 15% profit, now you can increase and this profit by 25%. Now, uh, what you do is uh, you are you are having this team and that is now free. And if you put these people extra sources over there, that will cost you like hundred uh, thousands and your uh, profit uh, which you will get is like uh, 15 lakhs 1.5 million or 15 lakhs 
So should you add resources over there? So you are actually by, by putting these resources, obviously you are spending some money, but then the chances to complete your project in five months are have been uh, increased, and by that time you are actually going for the profits. So uh, in that case, you can enhance your chances uh, of uh, uh, profit making or an uh, opportunity. So. Um, And then accepting, uh, okay, there is an opportunity, you simply accept it, okay? So accepting an opportunity is being willing to take advantage of it if it comes along but not actively pursuing it. So, if it was in the road, you said that you have to make a house, ठीक है और अगर आप घर बना लेंगे तो हो सकता है हम आपको साथ वाला घर भी बना लें तो आपने कहा चलें ठीक है लेकिन आपने इसको ही मदरन से रखा इसी घर को और अगर वो दूसरा घर आ गया तो आपने उसको फॉरन एक्सेप्ट कर लेंगे इनी रेट्स के ऊपर सो दिस इस काइंड ऑफ एक्सेप्टेंस ओके सो नाउ we have talked about strategies. Uh, so planning risk response uh, is a kind of process. So um, you know, first thing is identify responses if you have identified uh, and then select response uh, through identify response and then select like if there is was there was a list of two, three, four, five responses, you have to select one response and uh, then uh, you think and check all risk have been covered. If yes, you go ahead. If no, go back. And then again, identify responses for those missed risks. And if you have uh, uh, addressed all the risks, then okay, yes. Then um, plan resource and uh, uh, you know, uh, actions. And then um, after re risk register, review predicted uh, residual exposure. And predicted exposure acceptable, if no, then go back to the level number one, or if yes, then update project management plan. So this is how we actually plan risk responses. So there are four categories uh, of tools and techniques as follow. Uh, creatively to, uh, creativity tools to identify potential responses, meetings, brainstorming, uh, literature review, and stuff like that. And then decision support tools for determining the optimal potential responses. So all these Excel sheets and softwares and stuff like that. Strategy implementation techniques designed to turn a strategy into action and tools to transfer control to the monitor and control risk process. So these are four uh, categories of tools and techniques. And uh, then uh, response identification was the first step. So risk response planning builds on the available information about the potential risks and aims to determine the optimal set of responses. So shuru mein aapke paas kam information hogi, aapke response jo bhi hoga. Lekin jab information baad jayegi to ho sakta hai aapko revisit karna padhe. For this reason, it should involve subject matter experts and employ creativity techniques in order to explore all the possible options of identification. Then um, response selection, once a set of potential responses for the risk being addressed is established, the CN support techniques may need to be applied to select the best possible subset from these responses. The selection process should take into account the cost of the responses the impact on the project objective, objectives, uncertainty of outcomes, and the possible secondary and residual risks attached with that. Then um, action planning, uh, project planning tools are used to turn the chosen strategies into concrete actions and to integrate these into existing plans. So the corresponding actions may be unconditional or contingent uh, on a trigger conditions and predefined as a contingency response strategy. And then, in the last but not the least, uh, documenting the results of the plan risk response process. Uh, the risk response information collected so far is often uh, referred to as the risk response plan, although it may be, in fact, be an uh, integral part of the uh, risk register and may include add risk responses to the risk register, add corresponding risk uh, responses to the project management plan, and review and document predicted exposure. So all these things. So uh, you, you have to identify which thing we want to improve in risk register. We have to further entries in the risk register. First of all, we have to add responses. 
उनका स्टेटस डालना है और उसके बाद प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट प्लान के अंदर क्या चेंजेस आएंगी आफ्टर दिस एक्सरसाइज कंटीजेंसी हमें पता चल जाएगी वो हम जाके बजट में डाल देंगे और टाइम में डाल देंगे और क्वालिटी के हमें पता चल जाएगा कि कैसे प्रोसेस इम्प्रूव करना है कैसे क्वालिटी इश्योरेंस हमने करनी है कैसे हमने एच मैनेज अच्छे तरीके से करना है और इसी तरह रिव्यू एंड डॉक्यूमेंट पर डिक्टेड एक्सपोजर सो ये सारी चीजें बेसिकली आप डॉक्यूमेंट कर देते हैं ओके सो दैट्स इट वी हैव कंप्लीटेड टू डेज लेक्चर एंड दैट वाज अबाउट प्लानिंग रिस्क रिस्पॉन्सेज वी हैव गॉन थ्रू द डेफिनेशन then we have discussed in good detail about the critical success factors in, for plan risk responses and then plan risk responses processes we have discussed uh, ITTO inputs tool techniques and outputs uh, and then planning risk responses uh, in um, uh, length we have discussed all these things so um, uh, over time and experience uh, you will apply project management skills at whatever you do uh, so that is a very good quotation and uh, uh, thank you very much good luck and allah hafiz